everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome my name is brianna and i'm a third year medical student at a do school it feels so weird to be saying that i remember when i transitioned from saying first year to second year it was already weird and now i'm transitioning from saying second year to third year and it's just even weirder i feel like the last two years of medical school have gone by so quickly and at the same time they were some of the hardest longest two years of my life so weird situation going on as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my USMLE Step 1 and my Comlex Level 1 experience. I'm going to be talking about how I studied throughout the year for the exams and then how I studied during Dedicated. When I talk about how I studied during Dedicated, I'm not going to go into too much detail because my last vlog was honestly very, very in-depth about what I was doing every day during Dedicated. If you haven't watched that, I highly, highly recommend that you watch it because I basically recorded nearly every single day of my Dedicated period. I showed you what I was doing, how I was scoring on practice exams, how I was feeling in real time throughout the entire thing and I put a lot a lot a lot of effort into that video it was a long one it was three weeks of recording it took a long time to edit and it's probably one of my favorite videos that I've posted on my channel because watching it back it's just crazy to see how much I was struggling during those first two weeks and then in the last week when everything was starting to come together and then my reaction after I took the exam so I just remember after taking level one and step one I watched the fully edited video and in that moment after taking the exams I had felt so much relief that when I was watching the video I I just remember thinking to myself, do you even remember that this was you three weeks ago? This was you struggling, feeling so upset with yourself, feeling so disappointed, and now you're here and you're done. Granted, I haven't gotten my results back yet, so I was actually contemplating recording this video at a different time after I had actually gotten my results back, but that would just delay the whole process, so I'm just gonna post it now. So again, if you haven't watched that video, please go watch it. I put a lot of effort into that video, and I think it's one that you'll enjoy because, like I said, I went into a deep dive of how I was preparing every day. So let's talk about the USMLE step one, which I took first. The night before the exam, I was definitely feeling a little bit nervous, but I knew that at that point I had done everything that I could have done. So I was gonna walk in there knowing what I knew. There wasn't anything more that I was gonna know. And I just had to kind of believe in myself and trust that all of the effort I had put into my first two years of medical school was going to pay off. Right before the exam, I had a little bit of the jitters, but it was fine. The Prometric site that I was at where I took my test, the people were so, so friendly. They were very encouraging. Every time I took a break, they were like, how are you doing? You know, you're gonna do great. Don't worry, don't second guess yourself. So that was a really nice experience. I will say during the exam, there was one person who literally was coughing the entire time and that was incredibly distracting and frustrating for me. It's not the site's fault at all, but that person was just nonstop coughing for about two hours straight. She wasn't there taking the USMLE or the Comlex. She was taking a different exam. So she wasn't there for the entire eight hours. But I'm telling you those first two hours when she was in there and she was coughing like crazy, it was driving me nuts because because even with the noise reducing headphones, I could still hear her coughing and I could hear her at times trying to quietly cough, but it was just making it worse. And in my head, I was just thinking, why would you come here and take this test today when you are coughing? And she was not wearing a mask. So <laughs> that was not cool. After the USMLE, as you saw in my last video, if you watched it, I did not feel great. I didn't really want to talk about the exam. I thought it was really, really hard. I thought it was harder than the practice NBMEs. I thought it was harder than UWorld. I thought it was harder than the free 120. And I just felt like the questions were not what I expected them to be. I'm used to having a lot of first order, second art order, maybe even like third order questions. But some of the USMLE questions, they were just so tough. I would read an entire vignette and I would know like, okay, this is the disease they're talking about. If they ask me about what, what drug to use to treat it, I know what it is. And then the last sentence would be like, what is the greatest risk factor for this person's future fetus and their aunt? And I'm like, well, well, where did this question stem come from? What, what did this have to do with the last five sentences that you just made me read? So there were so many of those questions. I just, I didn't even know what to do with them. And there's another med student on here that also vlogs. Her name is Marley. Um, you guys should really go check out her videos. She's awesome. I think she's hilarious. She had the same experience as me where she would read the entire vignette and understand exactly what's going on. But then she would get to the last sentence where they asked the question and she would be like, what is this? Girl, same, me too. So, so many of those questions just threw me off. They were very frustrating. And I think that's what made the exam so hard because it wasn't even like, oh, five or six questions out of the total that were difficult. I felt like so many of the questions were like that. And there was even in specific one section where I flagged nearly every other question because I had no idea what was going on. I would get like five questions that I think are fair. And then all of a sudden like 10 to 12 questions in a row, I would just have no idea what they were talking about. Some of the words I'd never heard of before, medications I'd never heard of before, diseases I'd never heard of before, biochemical processes, that I'd never heard before. So that was frustrating for me. And I do know that one of the sections gets dropped. So I hope that that section that I really struggled with is the one that gets dropped because that one section in specific was awful. And then the other six sections, they were kind of meh, but you know, 
hopefully I pass. Now, in terms of the Comlex, I felt like Comlex level one was much more fair. It was very, very similar in my opinion to the Comsays that I took. And I think that because I took all five Comsays, which were practice exams for the Comlex, I felt very well prepared for the Comlex. I thought the question stems were similar. The content that was covered was similar. I felt like most of the questions were fair. Obviously there are always gonna be questions where you're like, what the heck is this? Why are you even asking me this? Where did this come from? But for the most part, I thought the Comlex level one was actually a very fair exam and I thought it was you know pretty representative of what I learned and it was a fair representation of the types of objectives that were outlined prior to me taking the exam. In terms of level one, I thought it was fair. I walked out of there definitely thinking that I passed, but I will say, you know, seven sections in the USMLE was already a lot. And then eight sections of 44 questions instead of seven sections of 40 questions on the USMLE was even more. Eight sections on the Comlex with 44 questions in each section was very, very rough. The last section, I was, I was done so. I was barely even there anymore. I could barely read and I, it was, it was a lot. Okay, it was a lot. But when I left that exam, I definitely felt a lot better than I felt leaving the USMLE. Okay, so now in terms of how I studied prior to my dedicated period, a lot of people study differently. I'm not gonna speak on that. However, what I personally did was I continued to watch all of my in-house lectures, which helped me on the school exams that were written by the professors and the attendings, but was not helpful for me at all during the boards. I will say probably one of my biggest regrets, or it's not really a regret because, you know, I high passed OMK and I got honors in OCS. So I'm, I'm still really glad that I put in the effort into my in-house lectures and all of that material because, you know, by putting the effort into that, it reflected in my grades because I did well. But it definitely made struggling for boards during dedicated a lot harder because a lot of the material that I needed to know for boards was not covered in the professor's lectures. So there were things that I needed to learn in my three week dedicated period that just became a little bit overwhelming. But because of that, I probably didn't do as much boards prep prior to dedicated that I should have done. I basically would do all of the in-house lectures and I would do all of the questions in UWorld and AMBOSS that were associated with that unit. So for example, when I had my psych unit, I would do all of the psych lectures. I would read the AMBOSS stuff that regarded psych. I would do all of the AMBOSS questions regarding psych. I would do all of the UWorld questions regarding psych before I took the in-house exam. And then when it was time for renal, I did all of the renal in-house lectures. And then I read the articles about renal in AMBOSS. I would do pathoma for renal. I would review first aid for renal. I would do all of the renal questions in AMBOSS and then all of the renal questions in UWorld. And I would essentially do 40 question blocks at a time and I would do two sections in a day. So I would do 80 questions every day for about a week straight. But I didn't do like 20 questions questions every single day because I was trying to prepare myself for the length of the actual USMLE and Comlex. I knew that you would have to be able to sit there and answer 40 questions at a time and then you get like a five minute break and you have to do another 40 questions. So I felt like to prepare myself and build the stamina, it made more sense for me to just try to do 80 questions at a time each time that I did practice questions as opposed to doing 10 to 20 questions each night. There were some days when I just wouldn't do any questions at all and then some days where I would just sit down and do 80 questions, 80 questions, 80 questions. I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure if I explained that very well, but hopefully you guys are understanding my drift when I say that. That's basically how I studied during my non-dedicated period. I did all of the in-house lectures for my professors, which again, were not helpful for the boards, but they were helpful for the in-house material. And I still felt like I learned valuable material from the attending physicians because those are probably gonna be the important things that I'm gonna actually see in clinic. But when it comes to board relevant material, two out of 10, don't recommend for boards. Pathoma, 10 out of 10, recommend. Amboss, 10 out of 10, recommend. UWorld, 11 out of 10, recommend. First aid is hit or miss for some people. I love first aid. I love the memory tools. I love the mnemonics and I enjoy reading. So I feel like that's why it was helpful for me. Some people hate first aid because they find that reading is not a good way for them to remember things. But I find that first aid was helpful for me because of the mnemonics, because of the memory tools and because I like reading. And those were mainly the things that I used. I did use Pygmonic at some point And I think for neuro, it was a little bit helpful, but then something happened with my Pygmonic app and it wasn't working anymore. And then I reached out to support and then I was just just so stressed out that I didn't even want to deal with it. And I was like, you know what? I could probably study without Picmonic. It's not absolutely necessary. So I just kicked it off to the curb. So is Picmonic absolutely necessary? I don't think so, but I do know a lot of people recommend Sketchy. And towards the end of my study period, I was definitely wishing that I had tried out Sketchy because I think it would have helped me with the microbiology stuff a lot because I struggled a lot with microbiome. But aside from that, Pathoma, UWorld, Amboss, First Aid, those were my four main things and I love them all. In terms of my three week dedicated period, I only only gave myself three weeks to study for the boards. And I'm gonna tell you why in this next clip. And then I'm going to tell you my biggest regret, my biggest regret for that dedicated period. So I gave myself 
three weeks of dedicated. During that time, I did five practice MBME exams. I took both of the UWorld self-assessments. I took the free 120. I took five comp says, and I did some practice true learn questions specifically regarding OMM for the complex. And then I also finished 90% of the UWorld QBank prior to taking the boards. And I had finished, I don't remember the percentage of AMBOSS, but the majority of AMBOSS questions I also finished. Oh, and one other very, very helpful, important tool that I used that I forgot to mention earlier was this person named Hi Guru on YouTube, H-Y-G-U-R-U. He has a bunch of YouTube videos. They're online, they're free. You don't have to pay anything. I watched all of his videos that had to do with high yield review of each of the systems. So he had a high yield review for neuro, cardio, pulmonology, renal, psychiatry, like all of them. And I watched all of them. And he is awesome because one, he explains things really well. Two, he gets to the point. Three, he gives you NBME practice style questions. Four, he teaches you how to take the exam, how to get into the mind of the test writer, how to be a good test taker. And he was just awesome. He integrated a lot of different material and he reiterated a lot of high yield information because repetition is key. If you're really in a pickle and you just need someone who's going to jam all of the most high yield information into your brain, I highly, highly, 12 out of 10 recommend that you go watch Hi Guru on YouTube. Again, I'll put it right here. Please go watch him if you're struggling. He was amazing. I watched his videos for two days all on 2X Speed and he is the reason why my NBME practice score went up by 5% in only the span of two days. He helped me go from a 28% chance of passing to a 59% chance of passing in only two days from only watching his videos. He is amazing. I would highly recommend. Again, if you want more details about how I studied during my dedicated period, please go watch my last vlog basically 20 minutes of me talking about how I studied during that entire time. Now, my biggest regret, and I know this is gonna be so ironic because I'm telling you all of these things and you're here to listen to me for advice, but if you take away one thing from this video, one thing from this video, let it be this. Do not listen to what other people tell you. And I, again, this is ironic because I'm telling you not to listen to anybody, but right now I'm telling you to listen to me, this one thing, do not listen to other people. And what I mean by that is this. When you go to medical school, there are so much uncertainty, so many things you don't know, so many things you're nervous about. So obviously you're reaching out to second years and third years, you're reaching out to your classmates. How do you study? How did you prepare for this? How did you manage your time? Blah, blah, blah. And they're telling you all of this stuff and it is helpful. But when it's not helpful is when they're telling you that you barely have to study for the boards because they became pass fail. Let me tell you that messed me up. Do not listen to anybody who tells you, you don't have to study hard for level one and step one because the exam became pass fail. That is simply not true. I had so many second years and classmates telling me, why would you even study so hard for level one and step one? You just have to pass. Like, and the threshold for passing is so low. 97% of people pass the exam. You're not gonna be one of the people to fail. And okay, I understood where they were coming from because in reality, you only need to get about 60% of the questions correct when you take the USMLE step one. But but you think that sounds really easy until you sit down and you take a practice exam and you score 56 like I did and you're wondering, how did I fail that? I have literally never scored lower than maybe like a 76 on an in-house exam in all of my two years of med school. How am I now suddenly getting a 56 and you wanna know how? It's because the boards are not like the in-house exams that your professors write and the boards cover everything, everything that you learned in your first two years of med school and some extra random things that are just sprinkled in there. So if you don't actually study for this test, you're not gonna know the material, you're not gonna know how to time yourself and you're not gonna know how the test writers write the exam Exam and what they're trying to get you to extract from the vignettes. You need to learn how to take the exam. You need to learn what were the test makers thinking when they wrote this exam and you need to learn the material. So for all of the people telling you that you don't need to study hard for level one in step one because the exam is now pass fail, the threshold for passing is so low, literally do not listen to them. Don't, don't listen to them because I listened to them. And then I was failing exams for like the first two weeks of dedicated. And that was a ridiculous amount of stress and pressure that I placed on myself because I was listening to other people. Please don't do that. The exam is not easy to pass. It's not, and I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm I'm saying that so that you know, you do need to put the effort in, regardless of the fact that it became pass fail. The exam is still really hard. It's still a grueling seven hours or eight hours, depending on which you're taking, step one or level one. And it's still a lot of material. The questions are tough. The test takers, you know, they're not trying to trick you, but low key, like they're trying to trip you up. So don't listen to other people when they say it's so easy to pass, it's not. It's not, you need to study, you need to put in the time. But I was listening to everyone saying, oh, you barely have to study during dedicated. You don't have to do questions every single day. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be so easy to pass. And it wasn't, it wasn't, okay? It was not easy to pass. I failed three exams before I finally started passing them. And because I was failing the week before my exam, I felt so low, so overwhelmed. I felt like I was so stupid. I was so disappointed in myself, but it literally had nothing to do with how much I knew. It just, it came down to the fact that I overestimated how well people knew 
knew what this pass fail change was going to do. Obviously, all of the students who were telling me that the threshold for passing are super low are third year students who took the exam when it was scored. So they were studying their butts off during dedicated, you know, they were taking time every day during this semester. So obviously for them getting a 196 or a 198 was super easy, super straightforward because they were studying and studying and studying to try to get like a 250 on this exam. But for me, a girl who did not put in all of that study because she's just trying to pass, uh, just passing was not simple. So again, I know I just said so much, but if I could just tell you my one biggest regret and the one thing you need to take away from this video, do not listen to other people when they tell you that it's so easy to pass the boards and you barely have to study. That's, that's not true. You need to study. You definitely need to study. Please do not do what I did and listen to other people and push your exam a month before you had originally scheduled it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. I will say now that it's all over with and I have all this time off, I'm really, really glad that I took the exam early and I do feel confident that I passed both. So I feel like that's why I'm relieved right now and now I have time off and I was able to move into my new apartment. By the way, this is my new apartment. I feel better now that I have so much time off and I can give myself a break, but those three weeks were not fun. Don't listen to what other people say but listen to me when I'm saying this. Don't listen to other people, study, do more boards prep than I did. Try to just put in a little bit of boards prep every single day that you're doing your in-house studying. If your professors in your school writes exams that are not related to boards questions or boards type questions or board style questions, make sure you do you rolled and Amboss questions for practice in addition to studying the material that your professors are giving you because that'll help you kind of stay on track for boards prep. And Pathoma, 100% recommend. The majority of the exam is pathology. So if you understand Pathoma, I think you're going to be pretty gold unless they throw in those freaking fifth order questions like they did for me for no reason then maybe you will not be gold and then Amboss Amboss is like Google, but accurate Google for medical related things. Highly recommend. You can choose high yield information. It highlights the information that you got wrong from practice questions that you did. I think Amboss is a great tool. In addition to giving you all of this information about the things that you need to know about the high yield information, you also get a question bank with it. So amazing. UWorld, best question bank out there. I am not joking. Listen to me when I say UWorld is the best question bank out there. It is. I know I just told you don't listen to anybody, but listen, listen to that. The two things you should listen to, get UWorld and don't listen to anybody else. And then first aid, up to you whether or not you want to use it. Sketchy, can't really speak much about it because I didn't use it, but I know a lot of students who did use it and they loved it and they swore by it for micro and farm. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope you guys liked it. I'm sorry if I was rambling or if I was all over the place, but I don't have any notes or anything. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything so that you guys could get all of the details. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for my next few videos. I'm definitely going to post like a short clip at some point in one of my vlogs about my new apartment because if you guys have been watching me for a while, then you know I was really, really desperate to get out of my last place and I love my current place. I think it's the perfect fit for me and Eric and I love that it's so much closer to the highway and so much closer to the grocery store and Target and all of that. It's very, very convenient and this place is beautiful. So I'm really glad that I'm here now. There were a few people who left questions on some of my last videos, so I was thinking I could do a Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, I am an open book. You can ask me about anything you want, medical school related, undergrad related, my life, relationships, what I like to eat, literally anything. I'm an open book. If I get like 10 to 15 questions in total, I will totally do a Q&A. But if I don't get that many questions, then I'm not sure if I'll do the Q&A because then it'll be like a two minute video. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!